was looking back at my records for last year, 88 degrees was our high temperature last year, so we were up near the 90 degree mark, so quite a bit different there. It is gorgeous today, and I've said that three days in a row now. But I'm not tired of saying it. But the big rainmaker is just to our west. It's along this frontal boundary that's going to slowly push across the plains area and move into our central Illinois area by your weekends. Rainy start to the holiday weekend as we've seen Storm Tracker 5X being scattered to isolated showers throughout much of the day. Welcome back on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's Storm Tracker 5X in the clear. We are seeing beautiful conditions. Just a few clouds around as we head into the first week of August. It is a cool start though. We're only seeing temperatures in the mid to upper 70s throughout central Illinois, and yesterday was somewhat of the same. Heading back to work, though, we're going to rapidly warm up into the upper 80s for your Monday but also comes with that some rain chances for your Monday into your Tuesday. And then as we get into your next weekend, 90s are back. We're changing that pattern into a more hot and humid pattern as we go into your next weekend. But temperatures right now, we don't have to worry about hot and humid because it is cool and dry here. 75 degrees, well below normal for this time of year where we should be right around the mid 80s. Temperature started off 61 in Danville today, 56 in Watsika. Heading over to Springfield, 55 to start us off and down in Effingham was about 61 degrees. Now temperatures uh, beautiful for any fishing, getting out on the golf course, also having any time of outdoor activity. It was perfect today. Dry conditions, temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, and we're seeing those wind speeds coming now out of the southwest because we've seen high pressure on top of us, which has kept calm winds and also this beautiful weather, but now that's moving off to the east. As that happens, we're seeing that circulation start to come in our direction with southwest winds, five to 10 miles per hour, up to 50 as we go into the overnight hours and that's going to bring in more moisture also bring in those warmer conditions ahead of a cold front that will impact our weather for tomorrow and into Tuesday right now dry dew points right now in the mid 50s but they're going to continue to um, increase as we go into the overnight hours here's where all the warm air is it's off to our west right now and Scotts Bluff 94 degrees 90 in Denver as well as Sioux City 97 in Pierce South Dakota all of that warm air inching its way this way and it's going to come with a warm front for your Monday Monday into Tuesday ahead of the cold front that's going to be stirring up some activity. But right now, high pressure has just left us with gorgeous conditions around the Great Lakes and the Ohio River Valley. You now you can start to see ahead of a cold front uh, some development in the Central Plains area, and that's going to be moving toward us as we head into your Monday and Tuesday. Some of those storms that move in on your Monday for your commute could be severe with some st strong winds as well as damaging hail as that moves through, but it will move through very quickly and will be left with dry conditions heading into the middle of next week. But your forecast for tonight for Champaign-Urbana, Danville, Decatur, and Watsika, mostly clear skies, 60 degrees as the overnight low with light south winds as we watch that high pressure move off to the east. We'll see southwest winds tomorrow, 10 to 15, uh, gusts up to 25 miles per hour, making our temperatures very warm and a lot of moist air in place. 87 degrees with mostly sunny conditions in the morning. Then we'll see some scattered showers and thunderstorms developing in the afternoon along that cold front. Springfield, Effingham, Charleston, Mattoon, and Shelbyville 61 degrees with mostly clear skies. We'll see mostly sunny conditions. Same goes for the southern portion and then we'll see those thunderstorms developing in the afternoon and evening. It will start to taper off on your Tuesday and also for the southern portion of the viewing area some of these showers and thunderstorms could linger into your Wednesday morning but then we will dry out for your Wednesday evening, Thursday, Friday, and into your next weekend. Now, this is where the pattern changes. You'll see temperatures are right around normal for much of this week for the beginning of August, but then 90 and 91, hot and humid. We have been happy with these temperatures that we've seen for the much of July, but now we're going to get into that dog days of summer. And I can't help but notice Monday, you've got that pageant to judge yes. in Georgetown, mm -hmm. so uh, it's hope gonna, you stay dry up Yeah, there. right, you're going to need to grab the umbrella. <laughs> Ponchos, they're not fashionable, but... Those girls, I hope it doesn't rain on those girls. I know. I we'll see know. what happens. Yeah. All right, thanks, Kaylee. Well, Kaylee Dion joins us now with a look at the radar. And Kaylee, you've got a pretty unique view of this monster storm. That's right, Dave. We are taking you back. We're looking at the archive loop with our radar system. Storm Tracker 5X can take you back to what we were seeing this morning. Now, Jennifer Ketchmark was in early this morning, and she was watching it as early as 4 o'clock, moving in from Iowa. Now, this is a stop in the radar where it's moving into the central Illinois area. You can see it's going to be moving from the east to northeast. Now, the thing I want to point out here is as it moves across I-55, it starts to bow a little bit. Now, what this is doing is it's setting up for some straight-line winds is what caused most of the damage throughout central Illinois here. And you can see as it gets to the 
eastern portion of Illinois, Danville, Georgetown, where they saw most of that damage there, that's where it bow the most. And we saw those straight line winds and the leading edge of the storm was the strongest, where we saw winds in excess of 70 miles per hour as it moved through the central Illinois area. And you can see here we caught that storm report as it was coming in from the fairgrounds where the tents were destroyed and everything you saw earlier with Tanisha. Now, as that moved through, it quickly moved out of the way about this afternoon. And we've been dealing with a calm sort of activity after that. Now, what's going on now? All of those storms have moved well east, and now what's left is in extreme southern Illinois where we're seeing lots of lightning involved and also a funnel cloud reported at the, right around the Ohio River Valley there. Now, in central Illinois, I think things are going to calm down a little bit, Dave and Jennifer, and I'll go into all of that and what we can expect in the upcoming days later on. Jennifer, a neighborhood couple found the girl naked on her bike just blocks from her home, and the couple says they can't get this child out of their head. We saw her found her right over here on Penn Street. Ryan Walsh was getting a pizza when he saw something he couldn't believe. Young girl on a bike, completely naked, and she's asking for help. The daughter said that her mother let her up out of the water uh, on the condition that she get out of the house. The 10-year-old rode her bike down this busy street before she found someone to help her. She has scratches on her face and her bruises on her back. Minor injuries, but nonetheless, she's very frightened and uh, taken into protective custody. Walsh got her a blanket. She was shivering. She was either really scared or she was really cold. And called police. The girl told the cops her mother tried to drown her in the bathtub. Her hair was soaking wet. She was naked. She said she didn't have time to grab clothes. She just ran. She didn't want to tell police her name out of fear of what that could mean. She was afraid that we'd make her go back. Police say the girl and her mother just moved to the Danville area and she doesn't have a job. Now, her and her daughter were fighting about custody. Her father lives in Maryland. In the newsroom, Kaylee Dion, WCIA 3 News. Well, I talked to the Champaign School District, Dave, and they had some concerns from parents. So they sent home, the, they sent the children home with this permission slip. So it allows parents to decide if their kids could watch. And we talked to students that did watch the speech and they seemed to have a positive message. I want to talk with you about your education. Students in Eisenhower High School in Decatur sat quietly listening to President Obama. So I know that some of you are still adjusting. Chrissy Harmon is a junior and didn't know what to expect. I wasn't quite sure about it. And neither were many conservative parents and groups across the country. But if it was my kids, I'd say they could skip it. Those against the viewing argued President Obama would push his political agenda on young people. Yeah, I think uh, children, small children, need to listen to their parents more than anybody. If you quit on school, you're not just quitting on yourself, you're quitting on your country. So parents in school districts across central Illinois had the chance to opt out. But one principal says she thinks listening to the president's message is important. Regardless of who the president is, um, it's our patriotic duty when the president speaks that we should listen. I know it's not always easy to do well in school. Students who did watch said his message hit close to home. Everyone's dream is to be a basketball player or a rapper or different big things like that, but most of it is you're not going to get there unless you don't try. Every single one of you has something that you're good at. And after some doubt, Chrissy says it was worth watching. It made me want to try harder and at everything I do this, this coming year and next year as well because I want to make a change in the world. Dave, not all students watched the speech today. Champaign teachers will decide when and if their kids will watch the speech. And I talked to many parents today and more the majority of them encourage their children to listen instead of telling them to tune out Obama's message. Mm -hmm.